Welcome second graders. This video is for Monday, April 20th. Welcome back to school at all. Uh, I hope you had a good vacation or staycation and did something interesting. If you want to send me a picture, that'd be great and we can watch it together on Zoom and you can tell us about what you did. Okay, so this week we're going to be starting a new book which is called Twister on Tuesday and this is the Magic Treehouse series. And some of you may have read some of these books before, but that's okay. We're going to do it together and, and talk about Twister on Tuesday. So today you're going to be reading the prologue. And prologue means it's the part before the book starts. So it's going to be on page one and two. And what it does is it tells you a little about, about the series. So if you've never read any Magic Treehouse books, that's okay. It's going to catch you up on what the Magic Treehouse is and what the kids have already done so far. And then today, you have a little booklet that you're going to make, and we're going to be working on this booklet for maybe a week or a little bit more, and you have two pages like this. So this page you don't cut. This is the background. The one that has the scissors, you're going to cut all the way around the outside and on the dotted lines. And then all you do is glue it, and you have a little booklet. So today's activity, all you have to do is put together your booklet. You don't need to write in it. You can start coloring it if you want. By the end, hopefully you can color your booklet and make it look nice. Uh, but this is going to be what we're going to be working in during this book. Okay, let's look at our spelling today. We're doing sort 29 on page 113. Now, we're going to have two regular sounds, R and shark and or in fork. And those sounds are just the regular way that we've learned the AR and the OR. Now, we have another sound that is the upside down E, R, or you can say it like this in those diagonal lines, you put ER, which means the ER sound. So this or this means ER sound. Now, in this case, we've spelled er sound er before, but in this case, on some of these words, we're going to have e, it spelled er, eAR, ur, or or, but it's going to sound like er, like we had earlier in the book, er, but the spelling of it is going to be different. This is what happens in the English language sometimes. Um, there's weird spelling that does not follow the rules. So, when you sort your words over here, the OR and the AR are going to just be normal unless it sounds like ER, like an ER. Okay? So, let's see. Uh, the OR with the W cha changes to ER sound. Uh, let's see. We've got UR, spur. That is an er sound. So the tricky thing is when you see er, eAR, ur, or wor, those are going to make the er sound that sounds like it's an er, but it might be spelled differently. So that's going to be a little tricky on this one. Okay, so we're going to be doing our handwriting book, page 63. Remember to tilt your book and use your pencil. Um, lower uh, The uppercase B is a little tricky, so let's try it. Make a tail down, up, loop-de-loop, -loop, make a boat. Wow, that was a lot. Let's try it again. Tail down, up, loop-de-loop, -loop, make a boat. That's how you do the uppercase B. Like in Mrs. Bollinger, I have to write that tricky letter. Does anybody else have to write that tricky letter for their name? Hmm. All right, so let's do, notice it does not attach to the word. It's separate. When you do your lowercase B, it's going to start out looking like an L. But bump the middle line and connect it. The thing that's going to be interesting or different it's like when you're writing beautiful, when you connect it, you have to connect that E kind of in the middle of the word, in the middle of the line right here. So that's going to be a, a little bit different. The, the letters that are connected from a B end up starting in the middle line. 
So let's say you were writing boy. You don't have to write that here, but I'm just going to show you. You would write your B and then attach the O in the middle line and write your Y. So it's going to make the next letter be formed a little differently. So be careful with that. Let's look at our math book. We're getting ready to take a test on Chapter 10 on Friday. So this week, uh, whenever you can, try to practice telling time and using the analog clock. So what we're going to do here is fill in the vocabulary. So our, remember that's 60 minutes. That's how long it takes for that minute hand to go around the clock is one hour. Half hour is 30 minutes. That's halfway around the clock. A quarter hour is 15 minutes, which is going around the clock. Uh, remember, if you divide the clock in, in four pieces, let me look over at this page. So if you divide the clock into four pieces, you'll have a quarter of an hour at three. Half past is here, that's two quarters. And then three quarters of an hour is over on the nine. So a quarter of an hour is when you're dividing the clock in fours, and that would be 15 minutes. One minute is 60 seconds. Uh, the minute hand is the long hand on the clock. AM is in the morning, remember. It's from midnight to noon. PM is the afternoon and evening. It's from noon to midnight. Digital is this clock over here. Analog is the clock like this, but of course it has hands. So you need to just fill in those sentences. We're going to do two pages today. So you'll also do this page where you're going to read the time and put it, put it here on the digital clock. Here, you're going to read the digital clock and write the analog clock. Now remember, make your minute hands long and your hour hands short. Don't make them look the same size because then it will be tricky for people to read it. It'll be hard to read. Okay, so then here you're going to have an activity. They're going to tell you what time it is, and you need to decide, is it more logical? Does it make sense to walk the dog at 11.45 a.m. or 11.45 p.m.? You're going to make a choice. Well, 11.45 a.m., that's about the time we're eating lunch at school. You could walk your dog then. At 11.45 p.m., that's almost midnight. Do most people want to walk their dog out in the dark uh, when a lot of people are in bed? That would not be the normal thing to do. So the best answer is AM. Now I realize on some of these answers you might say, well, I don't walk my dog at 11.45, but you have to think about, well, could somebody do that? Maybe it's Saturday or Sunday or something, or maybe they're off work that day and they can walk their dog. But so you don't have, so it's not necessarily what you do, but it's what makes the most sense. Okay, today for our scholastic activity, we have a new booklet we're writing in our dog booklet. You're going to be looking at um, inventing your own sea creature. So it says that you know about real life creatures like jellyfish and crabs and fish and stuff like that, but you're going to invent your own. So make a name for your creature, draw what it looks like. Ask yourself, does it have fins, arms, legs, all three? Try to make it look like it belongs in the ocean or near the ocean. Does it swim underwater or live on shore? Um, color it. Make sure you know what color it's going to be. And is it a scary creature or is it a cute, cuddly one? So after you write what the name of your creature and draw it, write a couple of sentences about it. What does it do throughout the day? What is your creature like? Okay, our art lesson for the week is going to be uh, doing an Henri Matisse type artwork. Okay, so I have attached a video to read a book that tells about Henri Matisse. Now, it's not this book. It's a different book. But uh, basically, Henri Matisse did, was a painter, but he became famous for using his scissors to do what's called collage. That's where you cut things out and put them together. We've done that a little bit by cutting out things in magazines and gluing it on. Remember when we were doing um, Horace Pippin and we did the Holy Mountain and we cut out pictures and glued it on? That was uh, 
collage, but we also did watercolors with it. So this is going to be collage where you're going to be using our scissors. And this is an Henri uh, Matisse picture that he did. And if you notice, he has these kind of like sea-like creatures that he's famous for. It almost looks like seaweed, I guess you could say. But this one is actually a, a trapeze. So like in a circus or a carnival, when they have a show, they will have like the people go on swing on the trapeze and it's like these little sea creatures are doing that. And this is what looks like the net. Can you picture that? And he did this all by cutting out pieces of paper. So if you'd like to listen to the story about Henri Matisse, it's kind of a good story. I have a different one, but uh, I'll let you listen to the one I have online. Now, this is what we're doing today. Uh, it's going to be, uh, a, there's going to be a tutorial that is on the website, a separate tutorial that you can watch me making this. Uh, you can do this anytime this week. If you have too much to do today, you can do this another day. So watch the tutorial and I'll tell you how to do this. Now your picture might be using different colors, so don't worry if you don't see the brown and green. Now for your extra credit activities, if you would like to do a recess activity, I really liked what some of the, you kids were doing where you were going out in your yards and you were looking for bugs or critters or lizards. That would be something that would be fun to do uh, if you have time to do that during recess. Just go out in your yard and look and see if you can find anything in nature and you can take a picture of it. Uh, if you would like to do extra credit, I have given you some extra credit pages and you can look at that. I'll explain later in the week. Uh, the, the pages that need extra explaining, but some of them you can just start coloring or start working on by following the directions that are there. Okay, thank you, and we'll see you later.